27th of January, 2023. This is one of the thoughts I've had this morning. Uh, we go on trails of thoughts, and some of them are connected, some are stand out alone. So uh, this is the headline, if you like, the concept. <clears throat> Beware of thorns to your flesh. Avoid briars and thorn bushes. Don't try to find grapes there. And this is uh, an instruction to me personally. And it's obvious if you're thinking in the natural, if you're looking for grapes, you go to where the vine is. And you go to find the cultivated vine. It's been cultivated by the gardener and the grapes have improved over the years. <clears throat> and you, you get to a classic grape, uh, and um, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful fruit. It's refreshing to drink, just as grape juice. I'm not promoting alcoholic wine, although I used to be a drinker back in the day. If you think of the natural and you're looking for grapes, you don't go to the thorn bushes and the briars. You go to where the grapes are. So God is clearly reminding me that some people, they are briars and thorns. They're not even grapevines. <clears throat> They're not even grapevines in the wild seed sown by birds of the air, dropping seeds, and grapes can grow in the wild. And of course, in the beginning, when God created everything, he created grapes. And which came first, the seed or the bush, the chicken or the egg? Well, of course, the chicken came first to lay the egg and of course, God created everything and everything was created in a, in a moment of time. God created, <clears throat> excuse me, God created. So, yes, there are some wild grape vines out there and, and sadly they're rooted in the world. So the world, the spirit of the world is feeding the grapes and uh, <clears throat> so what you're getting is less than the grapes from the cultivated vine or the cultivated olive tree. So going back to briars and thorns, do not pick grapes from briars and thorns. Well, they don't have grapes. We know we are spirit, soul, and flesh, body. Body, soul, and spirit. But in God's economy, so to speak, we are spirit and soul and body. <clears throat> and no one is called to live according to the flesh. Romans 8, verse 1, going forward, read the New King James Version of that. And you'll see there's three parts to that one text. In the context of the whole book of Romans, the whole New Covenant, and in the context of the whole Bible, old and new. But since Christ has come, God has given us a new covenant by the blood of Jesus Christ to live according to the Holy Spirit, not according to the flesh. And God cannot make it clearer to us, people. I've touched on this before, that our omnipresent, omnis omniscient, omnipotent God, he's everywhere speaking to everyone all at the same time. The thing that they need to hear. But of course, the world is lost. The world is living according to its fleshly desires, generally, all of them. 
all worldly people are living according to their fleshly, worldly desires. Eating and drinking, as in the days of Noah. And of course, what comes with the fleshly desires is sexual immorality and every immorality that you can think of. Everything that's immoral, unethical, sinful, wrong. The flesh. The flesh of man wars against the spirit of man, the human spirit of the human person. Their own flesh wars against their spiritual person. The spirit that God created because God is spirit and God made us in his image spiritual beings. Lower than the angels, but in Christ, higher than the angels, in Christ, once you're born of God. And it's not for us to command the angels to do this, that and the other either. Let's just put that in there. We're not here as commanders of the angels. We're not the Lord of hosts. Jesus Christ is king and commander, and he commands us, his disciples, and he commands his own angels, his holy angels, to do his bidding. And we don't have to tell Jesus to command his angels. Jesus doesn't need to tell us to tell him Jesus does not need us to tell him what to do. Of course not. God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. We can make our requests and petitions to God, of course. That's what prayer is, talking to our Creator. So, spirit, soul and body. Before I was born again, born from above, born of Christ, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, my living God and my master, my only true master. Before I was born again, I had no idea I had a spirit, vaguely understood I had a soul. And of course, I knew I had a body and by and large, my life was driven by myself my selfish desires, my selfish ambition. It was all about me and what I wanted out of life. Only I wasn't really conscious of these things. I was just a driven man, a workaholic, <clears throat> driven, 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 on a treadmill called work, called a career a career ladder. And being a driven person like me, a creative driven person, I ended up at the top of a creative advertising agency, a marketing company. And in our own eyes, we were like God's small g. We had no concept of the big g God, but we were treated like God's and in, in our own mind, we were arrogant and proud like gods, ruling our little, tiny little company. And although it was a multi-million company in the 80s, it was tiny compared to all the other agencies in England, UK. We thought highly of ourselves and we indulged ourselves. We basically sold our soul to the clients. We gave them what they wanted and they gave us what we wanted, which was money and credibility. And the more we earned, the, the higher we rose up in our own estimation and within the advertising market of East Anglia. <clears throat> we became one of the biggest agencies in East Anglia outside London. And we would pride ourselves we were the biggest agency. And we probably were. 
but we were big heads, proud, arrogant, kings, emperors, building up our empire. We were the top of the pile, and we were like pharaohs. And of course, there was a chief pharaoh over us all, a chairman, majority shareholder, chairman, and, and uh, MD, managing director beneath him, and I was just a mere director. A minority shareholder. And we had power, but of course with the chairman, he had the majority of shares, so he had the absolute power that comes with being a majority shareholder. And he was a churchgoer. He sat on the PCC of an Anglican church at that time. But I cannot say that we were a Christian company, although he had Christian beliefs, as did our accountant, as did other people there. They were churchgoers. But I never knew. We never discussed Christianity, Christ, God in our church, in our church, in our business. We never discussed spiritual matters. It was very much we had one purpose, to be an advertising agency, do whatever the client wanted us to do to earn the money that we wanted. Now, all that preamble is to establish the fact that churches run as businesses are no different. They have a number one and a number two and a ruling board and a power base. And they might even have shareholders if they're a limited company. But they all have a head office. All of them. The denominations all have a head office. An administrative head office. And, and if you are joining that particular denomination to work for them, whether it's paid for work as a hired hand or a volunteer, you are vetted just like they do in the world to join a worldly company. And there's no difference. The laws of this world govern how the churches are formed, registered, established, their trademark, their identity, their brand, their operation, are all subject to the laws of this world which govern forming churches as companies, charities, institutions, foundations, trusts. The laws of this world govern every, every organisation. It is how it is. It's the state of the world in 2023. So what has that got to do with Christ's church, the remnant church, God's holy nation, the body of Christ? What has that got to do with us? We're in this world, but not of this world. And that is a very hard concept to explain to people who are not of Christ, not of the Holy Spirit, not born again, not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, he is our teacher on the inside and he explains things from God's point of view. And Jesus saw it. And Jesus didn't bring his um, political kingdom into being. Jesus didn't join this world to be another politician. He didn't come to build an alternative temple in Jerusalem next to the previous temple. Jesus made it very clear, 12 years old, I'm in my father's house about, about my father's business. I'm in my father's house about my father's business. Spiritually and physically. Jesus had a soul, of course, fully human, fully God. Jesus could think. Jesus could feel. 
Jesus could do things, action, by his own will. Jesus chose. He chose to obey Joseph and Mary. He chose to remain in his earthly family. What else could he do? He was a baby. He wasn't even conscious he was alive until he became conscious that he's alive in this form of a child. And he became fully aware of who he was by the age of 12. In Jerusalem, in the temple, talking to the teachers of law, talking with them, questioning them, and giving them answers. <clears throat> A precocious child, 12 years old, and they were amazed at him. And Jesus was a virgin boy at 12. He remained a virgin teenager, a virgin young adult, and he lived and died as a virgin, having never, never, never committed any sexual sin whatsoever. Jesus did not get into fornication, and of course he wasn't married, so he never committed adultery. He knew what the sins were. He could see it with his own eyes. He observed life and he understood. He worked it out like every child has to work out with the help of the adults, the good Christian parents, hopefully. What is right? What is wrong, mummy? Why do they treat me like that, daddy? And if the parents are of Christ, it's Christ in the parents instructing the children, their own children, how to behave, how to turn the other cheek, not respond, how to deal with persecution at school. And there comes a point, the child becomes conscious of who they are and whether they too will follow Jesus Christ his life, the pattern of Christ, the teachings of Christ, the will of God the Father in the Holy Spirit, and the child decides, I'm going to commit the rest of my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that presupposes that the mummy and daddy, the daddy and the mummy, have Christ in their life too. And that's what we pray for God to pour out his spirit on all parents so they'll wake up and realize there is a real, true Jesus Christ to follow and, and to reject all the false Christs of today in this year, 2023. The Mormon Christ, in quotes. The Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus, in quotes. And all the other cults. Their form of Christ, but that's not really who Jesus is. They've got a wrong view of Christ. So a child growing up in a Jehovah's Witness household, they are following their parents' false Christ. We pray for the Holy Spirit who is being poured out on all flesh every day. And God is speaking to every single individual something relevant for their life, where they are today, spiritually. But I never heard God in my business life, but I did know the, the voice of God. I did know he had a voice on, on uh, two occasions, I wasn't saved. At 18, I, I got terrified of my life. My life was going wrong. I was hanging out in the city with the wrong people. And I went into a church building in the city center. And I, I literally knelt at the altar at the front in an empty church building. Nobody was around. It was an empty church building. And I prayed, God help. And very clearly, I heard a voice from God, I now know, be good, 
it helps. And that sorted out my life at that point of my crying out to God. I didn't say, God, save me. I didn't say, God, lead me. I didn't say, God, I repent. I'm sorry. I cried out, God, help. And he said, be good. It helps. <clears throat> it was another 15 years before I became born again, born of God, born from above. And if you know my testimony on other videos I've put out, I used to be a Freemason. At the height of my career as a marketing advertising man, a professional, an influencer in the city. We didn't know those, that word very much in those days, but we were influencers. We influenced the minds of the uh, readers and viewers to TV commercials to buy the product. We were influencers. I was drawn into Freemasonry, not by God, but by the enemy. I was intrigued by the secrecy, the club, the exclusive club of men. And so I asked someone some questions and he basically got me in to an exclusive club for men. A men's club. Chauvinistic. Religious, spiritual, chauvinistic, secret, occult men's club. Full of rituals, ceremonies, religious. And when I went through the third degree ceremony, lying down on an effigy of a skeleton in a coffin in the grave, with a hood over my head, in the pitch black darkness. I heard a voice, which I now know was from God, Jesus Christ, from heaven. You're in with the wrong lot. And it was a shout. And it was a shout. And I know it wasn't my thought. You don't think in a shouty way in your head. God shouted down, You're in with the wrong lot! And it penetrated into the darkness. The light penetrated into the darkness and light came on in my mind. And I realised, yes, I am. I thought, I said to myself in my own mind, yes, I am. And I shuddered because I knew I was trapped in with the wrong lot. Forever, for eternity, I knew I was trapped. I already concluded I was going to hell because I rejected God when I was 15. And God left me with that sense of going to hell. And now I joined the Freemasons and I joined the wrong lot. And I knew I was going to hell. And I didn't know how to get out of it. But then you know, if you know my testimony, Billy Graham came to England in 1984, something called Mission England. He came to various cities around the UK and Norwich was chosen by Billy Graham if the church united to pray for the lost Billy Graham said, I will come to your cities if the churches unite and pray for the lost. And of course, the churches in Norwich did in 1984. And there couldn't have been that many born again churches in those days. Maybe one or two, maybe a few. But that was the beginning of God's move in Norwich. For me personally, 1984. And of course, the prodigal son was the story that the preacher told. And when he said, God is your father, prodigal son, and he's waiting for you to come back to him, it clicked for me in my mind. And I thought, yes, I am missing God in my life. And this void within me from an absent father when I was a child growing up, our dad never reconnected with us. When we came over from Singapore, 
He had another two years to serve there, and he never reconnected with us. So missing my earthly father was this void within me. But of course, the heavenly father was waiting for me, the prodigal son, to come back to him. And when I agreed and said, yes, I'm missing God in my life, by his grace, he filled that void within me saved by faith and then I knew I'd go forward to commit my life formally to Jesus Christ as Lord and I prayed that prayer and I meant it I woke up different so you've heard my testing before you'll find it on other videos this is a new day God is leading us spirit by the Holy Spirit we have to take captive all our thoughts and feelings to submit our soul to God. Spirit and soul and flesh. And we're not going to be led by the flesh. I'm not going to be led by my own flesh. I'm not going to be led by your flesh. It's not for us to try to influence each other in, in any sense of the flesh, nor the soul, nor even the spirit. We're not here to spiritually manipulate each other, dominate each other, intimidate each other, and try to control each other. That's another video subject right there. Using scriptures to control people, in quotes, your churches not allowing the freedom that Christ has given us to be part of your, quotes, your church. We're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about the cultivated grapevine, which, which has real grapes, true grapes, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 forward. And in the fruit of the Holy Spirit are the seeds of truth that people receive. In the fruit are the seeds of truth that people receive for themselves. To be born of God, rooted in God. John 15, Romans 11. Pray for us in Norwich as we are praying for you out there, the thin front line where the light comes against the, uh, the darkness and the darkness contends with us but we're in the light of Jesus Christ do not fear man be wise do not be hasty laying on of hands be wise the wisdom comes from God God bless you we speak again by the grace of God God bless bye for now